This one small adjustment completely breaks the game. It will make your run game unstoppable. Here we go! Help me! Help me! And your passing game will bully everyone all over the field. So if you want to see what adjustments I'm using to get results like this. You can't touch this. Stick around after the intro. The For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The plays from today's video are once again found in my Denver Broncos offensive and Las Vegas Raiders defensive ebooks. If you guys want more help, you can instantly download these or any of my ebooks simply by clicking the links in the description or the top end comment. In today's video, I'll be facing one of the most used teams in the Los Angeles Chargers. As Justin Herbert is one of the best quarterbacks to use in the game. But before I get into the video, if you guys are enjoying the content and you want to see more, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button and let me know in the comment section as it really helps out the video and the channel and I appreciate the support. I started this game out on offense and I'll once again be using my iForm Close scheme today but with one new adjustment. If you have followed my channel since I started using this formation, you'll know that I started using this offense after the October 4th patch changed the requirements for defenses to get the benefit of the new read and react system that makes run defense way easier in Madden 24, as defenders will learn and react better to run plays that you use more than one time. In the patch, it clearly stated in the fine print that the defense has to have the same amount of linemen and linebackers as the offense has linemen and tight ends for this to be turned on. This includes tight ends at fullback and even wide receivers so in my last video, I showed you guys you can put a tight end at this wide receiver spot here to give you a total of eight tight ends and linemen, which very few defensive formations can match. Formations like the 4-4 split and the goal line are about it. But I wanted to try and experiment with this offense to see what would happen if I put tight ends at both wide receiver spots. Could I still run this offense the same way? Would the rushing attack be that much better or would the passing attack be that much worse? Well, there's only one way to find out. So even though the Eagles might have the best receivers in football, I'm going to take them out completely and put in my tight ends in hopes of overpowering my opponent's defense. Now at the fullback spot I have Grant Calcaterra and at the regular tight end spot I have Jack Stoll. I know you probably never heard of them and trust me you won't hear them in this game either as I put them here because these positions don't do anything but block. The outside receivers though will still need to catch some passes so I put Dallas Goddard at wide receiver too because this spot only catches short passes and I'm hoping that Goddard is good enough to still do this despite the fact that he only has an 84 speed but with his route running and size he should still be able to get open. On the other side I put my fastest tight end in Albert Akwe Boonham who has a 88 speed. My four play audibles are still the same as I will use the double outs as my dink and dunk play against just about every single defense. The PA deep cross go as my go-to play when I need a big first down or a big play. And the PA tight end leak as my one play touchdown versus every defense in the game if I dare to try that with tight ends playing receiver. So all I need is one inside run and one outside run. So I keep the zone weak in my audibles and I choose the halfback stretch as my fifth and active play since I'm going to use this play the most. In fact, I'm not going to use any other run play this entire game as all I'm going to do is run the stretch run over and over and over and i'm going to be able to do that because of the two tight ends that i have at receiver typically wide receivers have a run block grade in the range of like maybe 45 to 55 at most with the highest run block grade in the entire game coming at a 64 with cooper cup which is pretty average for a tight end there's also something called a run block finesse grade which is another run blocking metric where the average receiver is lower coming in at around the 30s and the average tight end is more than double that coming in around the 60s and all the way up to 70 who is the tight end with the highest run block finesse grade in the entire game, you might ask? Philadelphia's own Dallas Goddard. The stretch run is the home run play. On this first play, as long as the defensive end isn't too far outside of this tackle, I can use the stretch run against any type of defense. All I'm going to do is flip this play with the right stick so that I'm running it to what used to be the weak side, although it will become the strong side once I motion across the tight end at receiver since I now have two lead blocking tight ends. And I also like to snap the ball before it gets set. On the very first play, I get a wall of blocking tight ends that spring me for a huge run as my tight end at fullback gets all the way down to the safety. And if I wasn't being chased by this cornerback from behind, I could have easily followed this block all the way for the score. I run a hurry up to keep him in this defense, but it's not like he can change to a larger defense than the offense that I'm using anyways, as it looks like he run commits on the next two downs to shut down my run play. So it's time to see if these tight ends can get open. So I switch to the double outs, as these speed up routes can be any defense in the game except cover two zone. 
If you watch this channel, you will know that my philosophy on Madden is that speed is king and ratings really don't matter. So my preference would be to throw to Albert O since he is the faster tight end here. But he is also operating on the short side of the field. So I have to throw it to Goddard, who is only 84 speed and in tight press man coverage with an 82 speed cornerback. But at the end of the day, as long as I throw it in the break, I know he will get separation as we dot it up and take the lead on a passing play. On defense, I'm going to be using the defensive scheme of the 3-4 odd that I put out just yesterday, but I'm mostly going to be focusing on offense in this video. So if you guys want to learn more about that defense, I will have a link in the description as well as on screen at the end of this video, so stick around for that. My opponent starts his drive coming out in the exact same eye form close as me. Man, we've, we've been spending way too much time together. And he hits me with the exact same stretch one, with the motion and all. Okay, stop copying me. And gets the exact same huge play. Stop copying me! But since he doesn't have tight ends at receiver, he will only be able to do that a few times before my read and react defense helps out since I'm matching in 3-4. He probably should have stuck in that offense anyway as he tries to pass on the next play, leaving the formation entirely. And that was a huge mistake as he gets sacked on the next play to completely derail his drive. As we get him into a fourth down that he has to go for from midfield. So I run the cover three blitz that I put out just yesterday and... A week ago! Back on offense, my man is on to stopping this motion as a lot of people will try to overload that side as he shuts me down the very first play from cover to man. But there's more than one way to win with this setup. Since he's running man coverage, that means that the cornerback is following the tight end when I motion him across the field, leaving no one outside here to maintain this edge. So in the next play, I don't flip the run play and I just leave him in the direction he's going. And when the cornerback follows him, I just sprint to space to get another huge run in the opposite direction. I try to do the next play though and he shuts me down. So it's time to see if my tight ends can get open once again. Again. Only this time I want something a little bit deeper so I switch to the PA deep cross go in my audibles as this route usually gets open against any defense with a fast wide receiver running it. Since I'm running this on a hash mark with a lot of space to the boundary I motion across Goddard and let him get set this time. And you can see that my man thinks it's a run play once again as he shoots down to try to stop the run taking himself completely out of the play. And all I have to do once again is throw this ball in the break and Goddard gets wide open one more time against a much faster cornerback as we get the score. On defense, my opponent is trying to run too, but at least he's not going full panic mode and passing every down. Oh, never mind. As he hits two big pass plays in a row to get right back into the game. Damn it! But he should have just been happy with that as he tries the onside kick, giving me another short field for the third straight possession, while trying to use my own onside kick glitch against me. How dare you! He is doing a lot better job focusing on the stretch run though. <laughs> as I read cover through in the next play and take the speed out route underneath instead to get close to another first down as he is now blitzing the cornerback on every single play to try to help out against the stretch run. So I call the DB outs again and my other tight end gets wide open uncovered as I use the blitzing cornerback against him this time. Since he is looking for that stretch run, I decide to make a new motion and just motion out the tight end to create space and run the stretch as is since I already have two lead blocking tight ends on the strong side already. And it works perfectly as Goddard blocks two different people in the secondary on the way to pay the lane for another easy score. Now ask yourself, when have you ever seen a wide receiver do that? He literally blows the cornerback up so badly that he can move on to the safety and neither can make the play. As Goddard, a wide receiver has easily been my MVP in both phases, passing and running. My opponent is definitely panic passing now, but at least I give him the full length of the field to work as we get another huge B gap sack a week ago. Woo! to push him back before getting another on the very next play. Bring that ass here, boy. And then get another after that to push him back to fourth and a mile and of course this bonehead thinks he could pick it up from here you just got sacked on three straight plays what do you think is going to happen on the fourth one how about new no? on the next play when i make the motion across i am shocked that no one follows which means he's in a zone coverage but it also means they have a blocking advantage now as we create a wall of blocking tight ends one more time stay patient and completely go around it for a score on the very next play if you go back to the replay the fullback is the one that saved the day as bosa almost cut the play off and calcaterra got just enough of him to slow him down but if you look at how Sticky the blocks are by the tight ends once again. Alberto loses his block immediately, but Goddard holds his block all the way through the play, letting me get to the edge, and has been the reason I have scored every one of my touchdowns today. I sag my opponent into oblivion on the next drive to get the ball back at the shortest field yet at the literal two yard line, but this was obviously his last effort before rage quitting. See ya. But the question remains, was this the better way to run this offense? Having a tight end like Goddard at receiver was clearly a cheat code, as he either caught or had the lead block responsible for all four of my touchdowns. But Albert O did nothing on the other side, so I would much rather have my best receiver there in AJ Brown, as I didn't feel comfortable trying any one play touchdowns with a tight end there. If you run this offense, it is much more valuable to have your 
your best blocking tight end at receiver while also getting a huge advantage with your tight end blocking smaller cornerbacks other than that if you guys like this video and want to see more make sure to be a subscriber and hit the like button and if you want to learn more about the offenses and defenses i was using in today's video i'll have links in them popping up on screen and until next time thanks for watching man we should out if you more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more link in the description below